This is a second video in the series and if you haven't watched the first one, please go back and check it out because there I explain some of the terminology and the overall course structure. As before, we black out the irrelevant years and concentrate on one column. May I remind you of the other ways of calling these years, which is part 1a, 1b, 2 and 3. This time you can think about it as four quarters being all computer science, no sharing with natural science tripods or mathematicians, which means there is much more new non-A-level content to cover. Second year is when we introduce to big topics that correspond to the existing research groups at the computer science department. For those of you masochistic enough to do a PhD, there are a lot of courses. So rather than talk about each one like I did in the last video, I will show you the four big topics, which are theory, systems, application, and programming. Theory group includes modules that not only will teach you zero programming skills, but will also make you question whether you knew what theory actually meant and will let you spiral into a new existential crisis about meaning. Not the meaning of life though, this time it's the meaning of programs. However, I still very much enjoyed it because it's the closest you get to maths, logic, and rigorous problem solving and ultimately this was my interest before university and computer science. Systems group includes very hands-on modules and is almost the opposite of theory group. Here we talk hardware, networks, internet graphs, latency, throughput, concurrent jobs, distributed networks, and so on. Application is also pretty hands-on, but it's more about applying models and statistical techniques to work with real data. You know, to either recognize cancer or help Facebook parse your messages and give you better ads. Pick one. Economics, law and ethics directed towards the IT industry, plus all the legal things you have to know when selling your billion dollar idea. The course would have been more enjoyable if we just watched the first two seasons of Silicon Valley, honestly. Foundation of data science. Four words to hide the fact that it's just maths, which, by the way, I love, but so many coders are afraid of, and we've got to keep them excited. And data science? Sounds exciting, exactly. This year, many topics had a prefix further, implying that it was a continuation of something taught in the first year, and new material was built on top of the old one. So, courses like further Java, further graphics, further HCI. Disclaimer, there are no clashes in terms of lecture times, so Practically, you could go to all of them, but when it comes to exam strategy, it is better to go to fewer courses, but really dig deeper into them and understand them better than to go for quantity over quality. But more on that later. For the graphics, it's clearly geometry of curves and how light works, and they just spice it up with some VR. Classic Cambridge. Programming is again so we don't lose hope of being employed straight after graduation because let's be honest, which employer cares about you knowing about continuation passing style or the universal register machine? No, they want some Java Java and Python Python. They also want some C++ and JavaScript, React and Angular and other frameworks. But what are we, Google Camp? Hello, it's Cambridge University. Let us give you another language that nobody uses. This time, Prologue. Group project is a big practical part of your second year, but you don't get any marks for it. Usually everyone just passes, or if you seriously messed up, marks are deduced, but never added. Hmm. Let's remind ourselves what the deal was in first year. We had to choose one question from sections A, B and C, so that's three questions, and two questions from section D. Together we have five questions out of nine or ten available. Here's a slide from the last video. We had three papers and needed to answer five questions in each of them. Not a single topic could be skipped. You had to go to all the lectures or at least revise from all the notes. In second year, you're free. No quotas on sections. In fact, no sections at all. This is what I talked about before. Pick and study any topic you want, go to any lectures you want, just be ready to answer five questions on a paper like before. And this is where exam strategy begins. Not all papers were made equal, some have eight, some have nine questions. Long courses with 24 lectures have three questions, short courses with eight lectures have only one. 
paper four is heavy on programming, paper six on theory or science, so actually it's not random and there is a pattern. Each paper correlates a bit to those four big topics I talked about at the start, programming, systems, theory and applications. Apart from that, there are some programming exercises called TICs that make up your hands-on portfolio. But remember, just like the group project, they are pass or fail and, well, everyone passes, even me through sweat and tears, but it's possible. So here we are at the end of our second video and we have just two more to go. Stay tuned. Bye.